Hello there, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy. Welcome back to another video. Um, this one today I want to show you another technique using grunge paste. On this particular technique what we're going to do is apply it through a stencil, stamp into it and then use the paint to catch in the dippy bits where we stamp. Um, for this you kind of want to use stencils that are really open. So um, patterns like this where they're quite large designs with large open areas work really well. These are all crafters workshop stencils. Um, also if you're working on a larger format then something like this is perfect. If you, this is a 12 by 12 stencil but perhaps isolating a couple of the birds and using those would work really well if you're working on a, a larger piece like a 12 by 12 or A4 sized format. So we're going to start on our new chipboard. This is um, regular sort of grey board and it's coated with white paper on the front which makes the front side a little bit smoother than the reverse. So if you're going to stamp onto your finished piece then this is a nice receiving surface to work on. Um, <clears throat> so let's make a start. I think I'm going to use this stencil here today. And we're going to need some grunge paste. So you just want to get your grunge paste and, whoopsie, preferably get it <laughs> in the right place. Okay, this isn't a good start. But I'm sure we can fix it. Alright. So we're going to just put it through some of these sections. When I'm doing backgrounds, I do quite like it to be a little bit random. So I'm just going to perhaps have it heavier in that corner. And then I come up over here. And we might have a little couple of squares over there that we do as well. So there's no logic to it really. I'm just trying to apply it randomly in a few areas. Now because we're stamping into this... I'm going to scrape the grunge paste back a little bit just so that it's a, not really really thick on there. Okay so the next thing we want to do is take a stamp. So something like these are going to work quite well. Um, these are background stamps. This one's Hot Pick Extra 01. It's got some great lines on it. I quite like the Japanese script. Even little stamps like these little clocks or postmarks will work really well or the map. Um, this is from the Sarah Newman series of stamps, which she's got a fantastic script on there. And even small sections of this sort of um, newsprint type would work really well as uh, also. So we're just going to make a start. Um, I think we'll go for the Japanese script. Now we need to wet the stamp a little bit so you can spritz it or just rub a little bit of water in there so that it's not um, really, really... You don't want it overly wet, so I'm just sort of massaging the water into the stamp. And then I'm just going to take sections and see how it goes. So we'll just randomly press into a couple of these squares. Um, let's see. That one up there. So I'm just choosing that one design and randomly applying it to different sections. There's not a lot of the grunge paste left on the rubber there, but if you rub it with your fingers or even take a baby wipe, you can remove any of the grunge paste out of your stamp quite easily. Um, postmarks are always good. I quite like the contrast between the square of the design and the round of the postmark, so I'm going to see if I can try and get that going on. Oh, yep, that works quite well. But I do want to leave some of these squares um, completely blank. So I'm not going to cover absolutely everything. Um, what else have we got? I do like a fine bit of script. You can see I've done it before on this stamp. So you want to go for the section of the stamp that's really condensed because the more condensed the script is, the better it's going to work. So probably that section up in the middle or the one up the top there, the top's probably going to be a bit easier. And just press it in there. And the thing is, if you don't like it, you can just take your finger and smooth it over 
and repeat the process or perhaps if you didn't want it on that square you could then try a different square yeah so it's quite forgiving you don't need to worry about getting it absolutely perfect right okay so that's probably enough for the number of squares that I've got there so now what we're going to do is just peel off the stencil so that we've got all those nice square marks on there and then some of them have got fantastic script um, or patterns into the grunge paste and others are just completely blank and I do quite like how I've got the odd little section where there's just a little bit of grunge paste coming through or perhaps it's not totally square it's a little bit you know a little bit more random so I quite like that right oh, I'm not going to bore you guys with how to clean the stencil we'll I'll go on and do that later right so now I just need to dry it grunge paste is quite quick to dry so if you left it on its own in a warm room it would probably to dry this would probably take about no more than 10 minutes maybe less and it doesn't distort as you dry it so it's quite happy for you to use a heat gun on it So you might have noticed there was a spot of water on that section there and I can see that that one little piece isn't thoroughly dry but what I actually might do is erode the grunge paste out. I do want this, I'm just rubbing it away with my finger there, um, the way to fight, figure out if your grunge paste is dry is once it's cooled down after using the heat gun on it, if it's cold to touch in any area then it still means that there's moisture in there and you need to let it dry a little bit longer. I have taken longer than normal to dry this particular item because I know that I'm going to come back over it with a sanding block later so I do want it to be really nicely dry um, so that's why I just took a little bit longer. Right, so the next step for this is to apply paint. Now, we're going to use paint, just we can either do it the way we did in recent videos where we've used um, spots of paint onto the back of a piece of cut and dry foam. You can do this technique if you wish, or you can use a paintbrush. Um, because there is quite a lot going on, with the dippy bits and everything, I think using a paintbrush is probably slightly easier because then you can really get down into all the dips. So, but you can see the the cut and dry foam is it works reasonably well. Right, I'm going to use a paintbrush, and um, I just want to get a few colours going on. So, let me see. Where's the colour? Concrete, might use a bit of concrete, a bit of elephant. And as usual, I'm just trying to get a mix of different colours so that I have a, a good variety. Okay, so I'm just, I've wet my paintbrush a little bit just so that the paint flows a bit better. And then I'm just going to come over the top and slowly and gradually build up the layers. This one's Elephant, which is quite grey. This is one of our, our sort of more recent colours that we've done. Eggplant. And you can really scrub it into the, into the dips if you like, or if you just get a little bit more moisture on your brush then it will much more easily sink down into those sections and it also blends out your paint a little bit more. Now don't worry too much about how it looks as you're starting out. It's the initial layers are just about getting some paint down into these into these dips and making sure that the whole piece is covered. Just keep switching from one colour to another. Now, if 
you don't want the colours to blend together, then you need to make sure it's dry in between layers. But if you're happy for them to blend, then working wet and wet, that's going to happen. It's amazing how, how many dips there are on this thing. So I'm starting to get it the way I want it. So what I'm going to do now is I really want to get some colour into those dips, a different sort of colour. So what I'm going to do is take a darker shade, I'm going to give this a bit of a dry. So I need some contrasting shades, so I'm going to have a darker shade and a lighter shade. All right, I'll start with my light one because the background's all looking a bit samey at the moment. So it's just a sort of a quick dry brush. And I could even go back to the whole using the paint on the back. If you're, if you're worried about applying your spot directly onto the surface, you can always tap off excess and then come in over the top. And then it, you're not putting quite so much paint on there and you've got a little bit more control about where it goes. And how much you get on there. Okay, it needs a bit of a lift, so let's introduce a different colour group. This is the guacamole. Right, now I'm going to just come back to my really really dark colour which is this inky pool and I'm going to start to wash this through into these dips. So this is, um, you can see how it kind of starts to collect in there, some of those dippy sections. I've got it a lot runnier than the other paints that I've just been applying. And I really kind of want it to stay in some of those sections. So it's just a matter of putting it on, taking it off, putting it on until you get it the way you really want it to be. Add a little bit more water. Once you add the water it just immediately goes quite happily down into those sections. You could do this with the opposite, you could do it with white instead of the darker colour. Okay, I'm going to dry that and I might repeat. And I think I might repeat it with a completely different colour. This one is claret. And of course, when you get a sort of a blue and a purpley thing happening, it tends to turn a bit more blue and um, blue and a red thing happening. You tend to get a bit more purple. Okay, so I'm going to dry this and then we're going to start attacking it with a sanding block. Before I 
do that, I think I'm just going to put a little bit more warmth back into it with a bit of pumpkin soup. This is another bit of contrast as soon as you add that other colour. Right, so let's start sanding and see what happens. So we've got, I'm expecting that the uh, grunge paste that we started with underneath will have, um, it's got that sort of creamy colour going on. So that is going to come through when I stand, sand back and that's going to really create a nice contrast. Okay, just dry that off because it's not easy Water and sanding blocks don't really mix. Okay, there we go. So just going to start gently. And then you can start to apply a little bit more pressure. So one of the features about grunge paste is that it is sandable. You can sand it back to quite a low a low, much lower level than the height that it had originally. So this is a nice idea, if you're going to stamp over the top, perhaps you're going to stamp a flower or something, then by sanding the whole thing back you reduce the amount of lumpy bumps on the piece which makes a much better stamping surface. Okay, so once we've finished with this we just need to clean away some of this dust. And I'm going to just lightly wipe it with a baby wipe to sort of get that dust and you see all the colours pop out a little bit better. So you could stop there if you want or you could add more colours, more layers and do a bit more sanding. But it's a much smoother surface now if you want to, if you want to stamp something over the top or, or whatever. You could... You, um, you know it's much easier to work on. You could also do this, you, you don't have to do this on chipboard, so you could do it onto our heavyweight smoothie card and make a really large background and then cut it up and mount it and layer it. So it's, um, I, I just think it's a really nice idea, a nice way to get a little bit of texture coming through and a nice way to play around with your paints and just get some really interesting colour groupings going on. So that's our video for today, I hope you come back and join us another day. Thank you.